I'm Lyndon Stewart, the president of the Guyana Apiculture Society, and I've been a beekeeper for over 35 years. Beekeeping is the backbone of agriculture because one third of the food we eat depends upon bees to pollinate. Beekeeping also enhances the environment due to pollination. As bees pollinate, transporting pollen from the anthers to the stigmas of flower, which is called pollination. Pollination is the creation of new seeds that will regerminate into new plants. So the basic idea of not having bees to pollinate will mean no bees, no trees. If all the bees in the world are to die, mankind will only have four more years to exist on the face of the earth because bees are the only link between those who grow the food and those who eat the food. Bees are also tied in to the Guyana Low Carbon Development Strategy. In order to maintain the trees in our pristine rainforest, we must have bees around to pollinate. By becoming a beekeeper, you play a great role in making the environment a better place to coexist, along with the other living things. The increase of pollination of other crops such as peanuts, coffee, citrus, due to better pollination, insect pollination is important to many cultivated plants. Supply an extra source of raw material for industrial purposes. With a relative small investment, beekeeping can become a good source of income for families and new entrepreneurs of both sexes of any age. Bees are called advanced social insects. In a hive, there are three types of bees, queen, worker, and drones. The queen is the largest in the hive, and she can be easily identified through her longer abdomen. The queen lays about 2,000 eggs per day, and her lifespan is two to three years. The worker bees are the smallest bees in the hive, and as their name suggests, they do all the work of collecting nectar, pollen, and propolis. The lifespan of the worker is six weeks. Drone bees are the male bees. They have larger compound eyes and a blunt abdomen. The drones are smaller than the queen, but larger than the worker. The lifespan of a drone is two months, but if the drone mates, he will die shortly after mating. As a beginner, these are some of the equipment that is required for beekeeping. Number one, you must have a beekeeping smoker. The smoker is what is used to provide smoke to prevent the bees from becoming aggressive. You can use anything that is dry, can be littered, like pieces of dry cardboard, dry leaf, shaven, sawdust, or even cooker's bag. It is littered, placed in here. It is, consists of a bellus, a nozzle, and a barrel. As you smoke the hive, the bees will be calm because bees are afraid of fire. So when you smoke the hive, the bees will not be able to smell the body odor of the beekeeper. Also, the alarming pheromone that will be released from the hive to attack the intruder, the smoke consumes the alarming pheromone. It's an overall bee suit. Most beekeepers use a white suit because bees are colorblind to white. You can also use a red suit if you have it too because they're also colorblind to red. The material that is made with is drill or cotton. Now, this does not mean that the bees cannot penetrate this suit if they're going to sting you. But because of using your smoker, the bees will be calm and they are colorblind to white and the bees are going to be acting in a calm manner. They will not be attacking the beekeeper. Along with the suit, a beekeeper must ensure that he have a beekeeper's veil. It comes with a hat and it must be protruding from off of your face based on the rims that it carries on the veil. If the veil is stuck onto your face and the bees are walking on the veil, the beekeeper can be stung. So you must ensure that you have a beekeeping veil. You must also have a pair of gloves that reaches all the way to the elbow when it's on your arm. A boots that is reaching up to the knee is required. A bee brush is also required for brushing the bees off the beekeeper and off of the frame. A hive tool is one of the most useful tools in beekeeping. It is used for prizing, cutting, scraping, hammering nails, or even removing nails. You can remove a nail from a box 
This is just part of the beginner's kit that a beginner beekeeper needs when he's going to be involved in bees. After you've acquired your protective gears, you now need to have your hive. A hive is consists of a brood chamber and a honey chamber. This style of hive as you're seeing here is called the long strut beehive. The smoker and the hive tool is one of the equipment that you need when you're entering the hive. The beekeeper have to smoke the hive before entering the hive as to keep the bees calm. And the hive tool is used for prizing the cover because the bees will cement the cover onto the box by using a gum called propolis. As you remove the cover, if there's any bees in the cover, you have to shake the bees off or you can use a brush, a bee brush, and brush them off. Honey chambers consist of eight frames, and these are called shallow super frames. This honey chamber is a shallow super honey chamber. Under the honey chamber, it's an excluder. This excludes the queen and the drone from entering the honey chamber. If the queen enters the honey chamber, she will lay a lot of eggs into the honey chamber. The drones will have to be fed if they enter the honey chamber by the workers. And that will play a role in the production of your honey. In Guyana, it is not easy to obtain queen and drone excluders. And the bees that we are rearing in Guyana is called the Africanized honey bees. What we have discovered is that when the honey flow starts, the Africanized honeybees restrict the queen from entering the honey chamber. And all the drones are being killed and thrown out of the hive. In the brood chamber, it is consists of 10 deep frames. This is called a deep frame. Just now you saw a shallow super frame. This is called a deep frame. You can also use a deep super on top of the honey chamber also. But some beekeepers prefer to use a shallow super honey chamber. When setting up the honey chamber, you need to place the foundation wax embedded on the frame on the wire. The reason for that, if the honeycomb frames do not have foundation wax with wire, it will break during extraction. To get foundation wax, most beekeepers have to import it because it's not easily acquired in Guyana. But if a beekeeper has a foundation molar or a foundation press, he can make his own beeswax. This is a piece of melted wax that came from the hive. The honeycomb was melted during a solar process. And when it's melt, this is now placed into a pot. That pot is placed into a bigger pot with water and it's placed on the fire. As the water boils, it heats up the wax and it melts, which is called a double boiling system. The wax is now being poured onto this glass that is sprinkled with some soap water to avoid the wax from sticking on it. So when it is dried, all you have to do is peel the wax off of the glass. When the wax is peeled off of the glass, it is placed into a foundation molar or a foundation press that has the same corrugated design, just like the foundation wax. It is an hexagonal shape. It is placed like this, and this is folded like this, and it is pressed with a roller, you rolled, and then it is removed, and it can be embedded into the frame, and then placed in the hive so that the bees can start building their honeycombs. In order for you to get form honeycombs on your frames filled with honey, without breaking during the process of extraction. In order to get the foundation wax to be embedded into the wired on the frame, it is placed on a piece of wood. Normally this is being done with an embedder, but the embedder, the wax embedder, is not easily obtained. You have to either import one or you have to improvise with the hive tool by using the hive tool to press the wire onto the frame. And this is called embedding the wire into the wax foundation. When locating a hive, you must ensure that the area you are going to be placing the hive has adequate amount of vegetation and fresh running water. You must learn the names and the species of the vegetation in your area and what times a year the species of vegetation blossom and what will be the period of blossoming so that you will understand what your production of honey will be like. Just like what we are seeing here, 
in this area, there's a large quantity of different species of vegetation that are going to blossom different time of the year. So the beekeeper will keep a record on his production to know at what season and what time of the year he'll be expecting a harvest of honey. Bees are placed where there is no roaming animals and also there are no passerbys that are passing up and down and also not close to where residents reside. You can also plant all season flowering crops such as watermelon, pumpkins, peppers that will blossom all through the year. This will enhance the production of your honey flow. Some of the things that you need when going to check a hive, when you're doing your hive maintenance or hive management, it's a bee brush, you must have a bee brush, you must have a hive tool, and a knife. This is a capping knife or any sharp knife can do. And also, it is recommended that a young beekeeper must always visit the hive with another beekeeper. It is now recommended for a young beekeeper to visit the hive alone. In case of an emergency, they can assist each other. In order to practice proper hive management, it's good to check your hives early in the morning when most of the bees are out foraging. Before you open the hive or lift the lid of the hive, you must ensure that the hive is smoked properly. Do not stand in front of the alighting board of the hive because you will be blocking the flight part of the bees. Stand at the side or at the back of the hive. We are going to be opening this hive to see how well it's being managed or maintained by the beekeeper. Based on what we will see in this hive, can tell you if the beekeeper is practicing his hive management or his hive maintenance regularly to the hive. So first we'll start by smoking the hive and then we were going to lift the lid of the hive. From what we can see here is that the beekeeper has been practicing good hive management because they are all the frames are well placed in the honey chamber. We are going to be taking them out so we can check to see if the bees are storing, see how well kept the combs are. And it is always recommended that when you're going to remove a frame from a hive, do not remove from the corner, but remove any part away from the corner, which will avoid squeezing bees. Now this hive is being set up for honey production. This is the foundation wax, and this is a shallow super frame. It's in a shallow super hive. The bee brush is what we use for brushing the bees off the frame. We're going to remove another frame. The hive is not yet starting to store. So far, we can say that the beekeeper was maintaining this hive well. If you take a good look in the hive, you can see that this hive is well populated, and as soon as the honey flow starts, this hive is going to be producing honey. As you can see, this is another good example of good hive management. And one of the reasons why some beekeepers do not practice good hive management, that comes when the beekeeper has not yet overcome his fear of the bees. And by not overcoming the fear of the bees, you find the beekeeper will hardly visit the hive to maintain it. Once a beekeeper has overcome his fear of bees, then there will be no problem with him maintaining the hive. We are going to pick up one of the combs to see how well the bees are doing. So far we can say this is a healthy hive. And if you look on both sides, you'll see brown caps. And that's what most beekeepers like to see when they remove a comb from the hive. When they pick up the frame, they want to see most brown caps to say that the queen is productive in laying. Based on the brown caps we see on this frame, it tells you that it's a productive queen and she can be laying at her peak. Both sides of the frame, most of the combs on the frame are well covered with brown caps. If you check here, you'll see a quantity of pollen, show that the bees is bringing pollen from some, somewhere. At the bottom here, there's a drone cell that is attached to this frame. We are going to remove the drone cell because we don't want them to be building drones. Once they start to make drones, it's a sign that they are going to be making queens to swarm. So we have to avoid that. And that is why you have to be checking your hive to see what the bees are doing. This extra piece of borer comb, we are going to remove it also. 
That's some good fresh pollen there. I'm gonna return this frame back into the hive, but before you do so, you have to make sure that the bees are shaked off of the frame to avoid squeezing them. And you gradually place the frame back into the hive. We are going to put on back the lid. Now you must shake the cover. And then you check to see if all the bees are off. If not, you use the brush and you brush them off. Good. Slide, slide. This is a good example of bad hive management. Because the beekeeper did not put any frames into the hive, it caused the bees to build all the combs on the cover of the hive. This is another case of bad hive management. For example, the beekeeper did not place all the frames in the hive, and by not checking the hive frequently, this hive has become overcrowded. It is preparing to supersede. So what we will do to prevent it from supersedeing, we are going to split this hive in two. By looking at these combs, one can tell that this hive has a productive queen. So when breeding a queen for a new hive, it is good to select a queen from a hive just like this one that is highly productive. If you look on the combs that I'm bringing out, you can see most of it is filled with brown caps and that shows that the queen is a very productive queen. So whatever queen is being bred from this hive to put into another hive will be a queen with a productive characteristic. Because this hive was smoked well, the bees are not behaving in an aggressive manner. Once you can make a hive feel that it's not being disturbed, the bees will not attack the beekeeper. So you can work among the bees. I'm squaring the comb to fit in the frame because it was not built in a frame, it's a little oversized. So in order for it to fit comfortable in the frame, At this point, we are transferring the bees from the hive onto another hive to make the split. So this is the hive that the second half of the bees is going into. We have just completed the split of the hive that was overcrowded, and now we are preparing to cover the hive. This is the way you normally cover a hive, just to prevent from crushing bees that is on the hive edge by sliding the cover on the box. For the preparation of extraction of honey, these are some of the things that are required. You must have a bucket in order to uncap. You must have a straining cloth, a strainer, and an uncapping knife. You can use a sharp knife, any sharp knife. But if you have the opportunity to acquire a real uncapping knife, then see so and do it. But other than that, you can use any sharp knife. You also must have a centrifuge extractor where the honeycombs after uncapping will be placed for extraction. Just one thing you should note for beginners, when uncapping a honeycomb, do not uncap from the top come up because if the knife is to slip, it can cut your tongue, all right? So you start uncapping from the top and you come all the way down. If you notice, this part of the comb is a little tough, so the knife is sliding a little. So it will make it a little difficult to uncap. So what you can use is a fork and just scrape that part of the comb. The idea of uncapping is that if you place the combs in the centrifuge extractor without uncapping the combs, the honey will not be able to be extracted out of the frame. And as I mentioned just now, any sharp knife can be used for uncapping. Once the knife is sharp, it will uncap just as good as the original uncapping knife. And this is even doing the job better. After you finish uncapping the combs, you take the frame and place it into a centrifuge honey extractor. This is going to spin clockwise and create a centrifuric force that will throw the honey out of the comb. If you look carefully as the extractor spins, 
The centrifugal force is taking the honey from the comb. Look at the walls of the extractor and you'll see the honey is spilling out and it's going to run all the way down to the bottom of the extractor. Now, this extractor is not a reversible extractor. So, you have to remove the combs and if you look carefully here, you'll see all the honey from this side of the comb is being extracted. And over here, it's not being extracted yet. So it has to be turned around and placed back into the extractor and extract again. Just now, you saw us uncapping from a bucket. Now, if you're a large-scale beekeeper, you have to use a bigger uncapping tank like this one, if you're a commercial beekeeper. After uncapping from a big tank, you come to a larger extractor, which is electrical. This honey extractor, the beekeeper do not have to remove the combs in order for the combs to be extracted on the other side. As it spins, it extracts on both sides at the same time. After the honey is finished extracting, it is now strained into another container. And we are using a strainer and a special cloth that is used for filtering honey. Now the cappings also is being poured into the strainer. After the honey has been extracted, filtered and bottled, the caps that are removed from the honeycombs are used for making beeswax candles and other ornaments made from beeswax. After the honey is finished extracting and filtering, it is placed in holding tanks. And from there is where they do the bottling and labeling for marketing. Once the honey is finished labeling and boxed off, it is ready to reach the supermarkets and some of the drugstores in Georgetown.